Welcome to this daily devotion for Monday, January 11th, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and invite you into this time of daily devotion where we can grow closer to love of God and love of neighbor. Would you join me as we take a breath, start our week, focus our minds and our hearts and our spirits, and hear the invocation inviting God into our presence today. O Lord Jesus, in this hour let me hear again your call. Follow me. My steps are prone to wander. Come, therefore, I pray, and make your way clear before me. Amen. This week our theme is Following Jesus, and our theme psalm is Psalm 148. Today I will read it in its entirety. While I'm reading it, if there's a word or a phrase that jumps out to you, that catches your ear, that catches your spirit, just write it down, make a note in your Bible or on your phone, and come back to that throughout the week. See what God is speaking to you today through this psalm. Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heaven. Praise God on the heights. Praise God, all of you who are his messengers. Praise God, all of you who comprise his heavenly forces, sun and moon, praise God. All you bright stars, praise God. You highest heaven, praise God. Do the same, you waters that are above the sky. Let all these praise the Lord's name, because God gave the command and they were created. God set them in place always and forever. God made a law that will not be broken. Praise the Lord from earth, You sea monsters and all you ocean depths. Do the same, fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy wind that does what God says. Do the same, you mountains, every single hill, fruit fruit trees and every single cedar. Do the same, you animals, wild or tame, you creatures that creep along and you birds that fly. Do the same, you kings of the earth and every single person, you princes and every ruler on the earth. Do the same, you young men, young women too, you who are old together with you who are young. Let all of these praise the Lord's name, because only God's name is high over all. Only God's majesty is over earth and heaven. God raised the strength of his people, the praise of all his faithful ones. That's the Israelites, the people who are close to him. Praise the Lord. May God bless the reading of the psalm today. Our first gospel reading this week, and this week we are exclusively in the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament, is from the gospel of John chapter 1. Jesus calls his disciples. Our theme this week is following Jesus. So as we delve into the gospels, see how Jesus called his first disciples and reflect on how you too are being called to discipleship. John 1, verse 35. The next day, John was standing again with his two disciples, John the Baptist. When he saw Jesus walking along, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned around and saw them following, he asked, What are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which translates teacher, where are you staying? He replied, come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two disciples who heard what John said and followed Jesus was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah which is translated Christ. He led them to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Kepa, which translates to Peter. May God bless the reading of 
the gospel today. Uh, it goes on if you want to read later uh, John's account of the disciples being called. And uh, they're all a little different, the gospel writer John's account of <laughs> the disciples being called. They're all a little different, and, and there's probably historical kind of uh, truth in, in the in-between. Uh, of course, we have to understand how the Gospels were written and why they were written. But interestingly enough, here are a, at least Andrew in, in this account was following John the Baptist and what he was doing when John sees his cousin and John had already seen his cousin several times. And again, as I said on Sunday, I'm sure they had a relation. John encourages his disciples to go follow Jesus. Maybe John knew that his time on this earth was coming to an end and Jesus' time was going to be continuing. But I love what Jesus says to Andrew and to the other disciple who was following him. Come and see. Uh, in, the, in the version of the Bible, the Common English Bible that I'm looking at, it is a red letter Bible. Uh, and so that means everything that Jesus says is in red as opposed to black font. And so there, there's really, Jesus really doesn't say much in, in the passage that I read, but uh, it, it really pops out uh, in my Bible today. Come and see. Now, I, I think Jesus invites us often in the same way. You know, he, he, we're going to read different accounts, but he says, put down your nets, follow me. He says all kinds of different things. He said, come, follow me. He would later say to Philip, follow me. But I like this invitation, come and see. As if the invitation isn't this blind, well, you have to choose right now whether to follow me or not. It's an invitation. Come check it out. I mean... Thinking back to college, we had we, we didn't have fraternities or sororities. We had social clubs. Uh, and so I was part of a very big social club. It started as a very small social club. By the time uh, my, my friends and I were leaders, uh, it became very large. Uh, about 10% of the college was involved in our club. And if we wanted to invite you to the club, we wouldn't say, well, here's a form, fill it out choose whether you're going to join or not. And if you can't decide right now, you can't come. We would say, come and see. We're having, you know, we always did things for freshmen, like, you know, have a movie night with, you know, sandwiches and food. You know, if you want college kids to come to something, you feed them. We'd invite people, come and see what it's all about. And Jesus does the same thing. Isn't it so interesting? Come and see. And Jesus is doing the same thing to us today. Come and see. Christianity isn't about this yoke of oppression that we have to force everybody into our box. It is an invitation into a different way of living, a different way of speaking, a different way of loving, a different way of doing justice, seeking mercy. And so I invite you, come and see. Wonderful affirmation from our Savior. Today I have a reading from uh, just a formative work. If you, uh, if you love to read, if you love to read um, Christian authors, mothers and fathers throughout uh, time and place, this work is, I think, really something worth spending some time with. And it's referred, well, it's called The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempis. Here's just a little passage from it. Lord, you know what is most profitable to me. Do this or that according to your will. Give me what you will, as much as you will, and when you will. Do with me, you know what is best to be done, as it shall please you. And as it shall be most to your honor, put me to where you will. I am your creature, and in your hands lead me and turn me where you will. Lo, I am your servant. 
ready to do all things you command. For I do not desire to live by myself, but to you. Would to God that I might live worthily and profitably to your honor. May God bless the reading. Uh, Very similar uh, words and uh, very similar phrases to Wesley's covenant prayer, at least the the, the way we, we talk about it when we just pray the prayer by itself. Understanding that part of discipleship, when we accept the invitation, is to give ourselves over to it uh, and to do what Jesus did. Lord, not my will, but your be done. Uh, and I know people struggle with this because we are a, we're a willful people. And perhaps no more so than in the West, in the Western world, in the Western contemporary world, uh, as opposed to some other Eastern cultures where your identity is all about the, the, the society. Like you're all about the other, the, the community, the nation. And, and to some sense we are too. But even within our national pride, there, there's this heavy individualism in the Western world. And so we, we get a little obsessed about our will. And, and sometimes then we get defensive about, well, I don't want to give myself over to someone else's will because then I lose my identity. But for me, offering my will to God and following God's will for my life is living into a different identity, an identity as a child of God. Because I know, and I tell my kids this all the time, the things I tell you, the, the, the rules I put in place, don't go sled in the front of the house down the driveway because people don't drive slow on that street. And if you go into that street, you will get hit by a car and die. I'm not telling you that. Just like, don't have any fun. I have your best interest. And I won't always, as their parent, make the best decision for them. I won't always really understand the best interest for them, but especially when they're children, I really do. And the things I say are pretty wise. The rules I put in place are pretty much so they don't die. And as a child of God, it's the same way, except God does actually 100% have our best interest, can see beginning and end, knows us fully, understands who we are and who we're meant to be fully, what makes us happiest, most joyful, most filled with love. And so when I say, not my will, but yours be done, it's not only a selfless act, it's a self-interested act, because I know when I'm following God's will, I'm going to be so much more complete, so much happier, so much more hopeful, able to deal with all kinds of craziness. Today we do pray for those closest to us. I lift up the prayers of uh, anyone in your life and always let us know. Send us a message. Send us an a email at the prayer chain. No, you, umcnl.com to be connected with us through prayer. At least so that we can pray. Obviously, we're happy to talk. It's hard not to be able to visit people and sit with people and cry with people in this day and in this time, but we are so beautifully connected through our technology and we thank God for that. Let us uh, be in an attitude of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, this opportunity to gather, to ask, what does it mean to follow you? And to hear you say, come and see. Be with those who are closest to us, our family and friends, those who we love and see dearly, regularly. Encourage them and allow us to encourage them and also allow us to invite them and say, come and see. We pray this in your holy name. The name you taught us, the name of Jesus, and we pray as he prayed, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, so we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with the benediction until tomorrow.
Dear Jesus, assist me to follow God's will, even as you followed your own destiny. Shed light upon my path and keep close to me that I may follow you. Amen. Until tomorrow, friends. Goodbye.